Welcome back to Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Two star. Good morning, Rob. And I left and my my video camera started following Maria, but I was able to correct it in time. Well, a good save. Yeah, good save. That's right. Although it could have been on Maria the whole time. That would have been fine. That would have been fine. Just yeah. fine. We would have had two cameras on Maria, which That's right, would be yeah. Maria in stereo. I guess. And, and that would have been weird. And Maria would have said, how about the third? We need three on me. <laughs> well, you want to just turn them all on or now? Yeah, that was not, not a bad idea. It's, a, it's a good thing. Thing you and I are such good friends, Bill. That's all I can say. That's all I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. That is Maria Lawrence and All Star. And uh, we are produced by the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin. And our uh, next guest is Jim Ouellette, executive director of the Berkeley County Public Service Water District. Jim, good morning. Thank good, you for coming good in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It is, uh, I, I guess, if you're a person who needs water in your community, <laughs> which I can't imagine any of us don't, uh, rain is quite welcome. Uh, this uh, has been a pretty tough. Uh, summer and, and whole season in fact we don't get as much snow as we used to any longer and it was a fairly dry summer with some welcome rain on the way well it seems every time i come to see you we do have some precipitation <laughs> then maybe that's the key to breaking a drought jim what do you think well we'll keep that in mind yeah, yeah. We'll just schedule an appearance on the program open up the clouds oh, yeah. right yeah what is the status of the water supply in the county right now jim well, interestingly enough, I know the rest of the state has uh, expressed some concerns with lack of precipitation in, uh, over towards Ohio and the central part of the state. But relative to last year, we've actually had a great season because we entered into the summer cycle with an abundance of groundwater. So our spring, which is the one um, source of water that's more susceptible to changes, is actually doing great this year. So that's we're, doing, we're having, you know, doing very well. Favorite springs. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Where, okay. where did the water come from? Well, we, we entered into the year because we had more precipitation last winter, whereas the previous winter mm -hmm. we did not have an adequate supply to restore, if you will, the groundwater supply. And so the normal cycle by the time we got into the summer was relatively low, which caused a lot of angst last year. Mm -hmm. And without some cleverness, uh, we would have had a, a, a worse situation. But we managed to get through, and then this year, because we had more abundant rainfall in the winter, we entered into the year and we're doing fine. And for this time of year, which is normally the low time of year, we're actually in very good shape. So one less thing to worry about this particular season. That's very nice. Yeah, Jim, we, we think of um, uh, water being for everybody the same, but actually there's two groups of people from two water sources. One that uses public water for either from you or the city, and then those individuals that are outside of the public water network that are on individual wells. Are the new homes, do you have any idea the percentage, relative percentage, that are on public water as opposed to wells? Any sense at all? I do not. Uh, I can say this. Um, what is the population of the county now, 120? About 121. I think Anthony Delgatti told me one. 30 um close to 130 yeah. so it's approaching 130 uh we actually serve about 92,000 okay residents if you will through our 32,000 metered connections so the majority of the population receives their water from mm -hmm. the district and of course you got the city of martinsburg water supply factored in there for their small sure. percentage that they can they provide for so yeah. I don't know the answer to your question. Yeah, Admiral. I'd heard around 60 percent on the public water, and then forty on individual wells. But it sounds like it may be a no. little bit higher than that on yeah. public water. Yeah, the, the concentration of uh, mm -hmm. give you an idea. We added three point three new metered customers to our water supply every single day of the year last year. <sighs> Every amazing, day. Amazing, amazing. So 1,219 we added in the last fiscal year. And that's not an anomaly since I've been here. We've had average close to 2.7, 2.8 a year for the last six years. That makes sense because I can't remember who we had in last week or the week before that told us we're building twelve to 1,400 new homes a year in Berkeley County. So Could ask Justin Henry that. We're probably, yeah. It's probably close. If you're getting um, 1,200 new metered connections a year, that would match up with 1,200 new homes a year, right? Yeah. yeah, and then, of course, as Bill alluded to, there are some of those on wells that are added as part of the sure. total package also. We had Delegate Darren Thorne in out of Hampshire County last week. And he is the only full-time farmer in the legislature. And he made mention of the fact that the, there, is, there is a drought. It is affecting uh, his farm tremendously. He does a lot of livestock, cattle farming and such. And 
was talking about only being able to get one cut for straw, hay, that sort of thing for this year. And many of the farmers are very concerned about that. You're painting an entirely different picture in Berkeley County. Are we unique in the state, Jim? Well, apparently, um, you know, like it can shift year to year, but we've had a, a reasonable amount of water. Um, we had a, a period earlier in the summer was relatively dry, but then we got that storm that came through and we all got about three or four inches of rain in the course of 48 hours. So it really staved off the decline that would normally occur this time of year. How many inches of precipitation a year do we need to maintain? I don't have that exact number off the top of my head. Obviously, whatever is typically exper expected here tends to supply the groundwater adequately. Does it matter to you if it's snow or rain? Well, there's a history or a thought that snow is more desirable but because it tends to percolate into the ground at a very slow rate without running off. And Typically what you see is when you get rainfall in the summer, a lot of it gets absorbed by the, uh, the agriculture, not the agriculture, but the, uh, the trees and the grass, and it doesn't get into the groundwater, whereas when you get rainfall during the winter months, it's more likely to seep into the ground and then be stored for when we need it during the summer. Rob, I vaguely remember a number 35 inches per year is the desired amount, but I don't, that's, that's old information, at least. Uh, Jim, I think the water district deserves phenomenal credit of anticipating the needs of the county and absorbing and and, and absorbing the the, uh, the growth. Uh, you're taking a lot of proactive steps. You're putting in new uh, uh, water tanks. You're doing distribution tanks. You've got a lot of money from the state recently, several million dollars to do this. Go through some of the things that you as a water district are doing, trying to <coughs> keep pace with the drought, drought and also your sources of water, of the Potomac River. So. Well, that's a... a great uh, lead into this uh, admiral the um, as we speak we have probably uh, 80 million dollars worth of projects underway we've broken ground this summer on the expansion of the river plant we're going to increase the capacity of that from 6 million gallons a day to 10 million gallons a day and the river is the real variable that will sustain this community's water supply going into the future because it's the one source of water that's drought resistant if you will and so that's underway and the problem is it takes uh, 30 months or so between the time you start to when you actually complete the project so that's begun uh, we're also breaking ground on the uh, bunker hill replacement plant and that's uh, uh, going to take also 30 months and that's not necessarily going to increase our water supply but we've constructing in such a way that it's going to have additional capacity and we're looking for more water sources to bring to it then we can treat the water and the distributor from there. We also Excuse have... Excuse me a second, but those two are connected. There's, there's lines from the river down to the Inwood area, is there not? The, it is physically connected. Yeah. It does require mechanics in order yeah. to yeah. overcome the head that we have yeah. to pump against yeah. to get it in that front. Because yeah. south end of the county is actually higher than up here by sure. the river. So, yeah. But yes, we can move water from the river all the way to the Virginia line. Yeah. And then we have these water tanks. We're... Uh, we're already under design. We have the land. Uh, we want to add an additional water storage tank in the industrial zone, we call it, which is down there Procter & Gamble in the airport. Uh, so we'll have redundancy in that area. And we also have to replace the Ridge Road water tank, which is out um, obviously on Ridge Road in Hedgesville. And these are large tanks. Is that 2 million gallons? So? Yes, sir. They will okay. both be 2 million gallons. Yeah. All the tanks we're going to be building are mm -hmm. all consistently 2 million yeah. gallons because it's a sweet spot when you build a tank. Sure. And then we want another tank that we need in the South Berkeley area, just north of Inwood, uh, in order to serve that area because it's, it's uh, significantly deficient water storage right now. So, and we also want to build another tank out in the Curtisville area uh, to replace the existing tank out there. So we are not uh, lacking for uh, need, and, and we have plans. We have all the engineering underway. It just takes time, and yet we have people keep coming and coming and coming and business is coming and uh, so we're trying to stay ahead of the curve so that we can continue to support the economics of our community and you just talking about the Chamber of Commerce without a water supply I guess we don't really have to worry so much about new people coming to town and all the things that are affiliated with it but uh, we want to do the best we can to make sure that we are able to support uh, all the potential growth that this community is benefiting from. How about Points West? 
Great question. Uh, that's where uh, more pumping is required because the elevation change. Uh, that's one thing this community probably has to consider is that we have an abundance of land, and that is a, there's two variables to growth, water and land. We have the land, and we actually do have the water. It just takes time to get it from the river, treat it, distribute it. So we kind of can always be prepared to allow for expansion. It's what the community wishes, and how long does it take for us to get that infrastructure available to serve the interest of, uh, of development and growth. And I remember the last time you were here, Jim, that you talked about, and I'm not for sure that people recognize that the water usage by some of the the larger companies, in particular P and G, what they, I mean, when when that was when that project was underway, um, did we realize how much water was um, was going to take for them to operate each day? Well, <clears throat> they did say they were going to use a million gallons a day when okay. they approached the community. And yes, they use a million gallons a day. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, that's just, it's astounding to me that, um, that that's what it takes. Oh. But all you have to do is go down and look, and you're just like, my gosh, what a voluminous place that yeah. is. So. And, um, and there's others. There's a, another facility that's coming in right next to Procter & Gamble. It's a laundry facility that wants to use 170,000 gallons a day. There's this uh, metal manufacturing facility that's coming to the community, CMC. They've been waffling back and forth on where they want to use their water for their production purpose. They claim they're going to use 600,000 gallons a day of water. We were hoping they might use the wastewater effluent from a nearby wastewater plant. That hasn't seemed to have developed as we had hoped, so we may be... Uh, in a, in a, we, we will be supplying them with a significant amount of water. It's located right next to our river plant. I was going <clears> to <throat> say, that's right up um, Beddington Way um, that would be easily, not, maybe not easily facilitated, but you do have the, the plant right there. Right? We do, and we got to put a little infrastructure in it, and it kind of dovetails with the fact that that plant's under construction to be expanded to an additional you know, four million gallons a day above what we have. We're just hoping that it comes together simultaneously where the plant is uh, completed to have the excess capacity simultaneous with when they desire to come online. So uh, we're working it very diligently. And uh, are any of these folks reusing the water that they regenerating the water that they use, Jim? Uh, no, we don't have any of that in the community that I'm aware of. So the user we were hoping that the wastewater facility that's uh, located on Bennington Road might be the source of water for production purpose, not domestic uh, usage, but production uh, for that CMC facility. But as we speak, that doesn't appear to be the way it's heading. So when they use 600,000 gallons of water, it, and they use it, and then does it go straight down the, the pipe and back into the river at another point? Is that how that works? Uh, in effect, their, their use is for cooling purposes, so a lot of it gets dissipated into the atmosphere. Vapor. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, does any of it get discharged back into the water supply? Is that all that? I, uh, not come, that I'm aware of. So the life of the water for them is basically water and then evaporation. That's my understanding. Right. Tell, tell me about how the drinking water works, my tap water. I turn on my, my tap. Uh, the water came from the river. It got treated, and then it got sent to my house. Take me through how that process works and how far that might be traveling. Well, I guess that would depend on where you are relative to the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, uh, it's, uh, we'd be glad to give you a tour if you want to take a ride and mm -hmm. show you. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a process that just obviously it's a physical chemical reaction that you take when you treat water. You, uh, you add chemicals to enhance the ability to settle the solids out. And then you, you use uh, chlorine to disinfect any microbiological activity and uh, make it safe for consumption. And well, we use a lot of pumps and plants and uh, pipes to get it to where it belongs or where it needs to be. So after it's treated, it then goes on its journey through the pipes and eventually comes to my house. Yeah, and it usually goes through tanks to store it for uh, when it's needed. And, and obviously, we've also provide fire protection to our community, and that's one of the values of having a public water supply is you have that also available to you to help promote a, a safe community. As it's stored, is there any additional need for treatment, depending on how long it's in a tank or whatever, uh, before it gets to my house? Not in our case. Some places they have to require some supplemental chlorination, but that's not something that has been part of us because the water doesn't sit in any one place for any what is time. the What is your uh, target for turnover 
for the water in the tanks? Oh, usually a couple days a couple at the days, most. Yeah. You know, so. Is the water from the Fever Springs treated the same as the water from the Potomac River? No, because the water coming, it's groundwater, and it's, yeah. it's pristine as it comes out. Yeah. It's just required to be treated because of regulations. Okay. And uh, so we really, we really remove very little turbidity from the water. It's primarily just chlorination and then okay. uh, distribution. How about the PFAS um, uh, contaminants? Do you do anything for PFAS? Well, that is quite a uh, issue in the world of public water uh, because it has uh, uh, the regulations have become quite extreme that has been put forth by our, our friends in Washington. And uh, we haven't seen it at any appreciable level in any of our water supplies, but uh, some places have, and, and the cost to treat it is significant. And um, sometimes you have to wonder whether or not the, uh, the value is worth the cost. Are you required to treat even though the, uh, the level of PFAS is not very high in this area? Well, it's all predicated upon what the uh, regulatory agencies say is required. Mm. And right now they've come out with a regulation which says that 0.4 parts per trillion is the acceptable level. Does anybody want to hazard a guess what the equivalency of one part per trillion is equal to in the minds of people? No. <laughs> it's one Tell inch us. in 16 million miles. Okay. How much money are you going to spend to remove something that's one inch in 16 million miles? I guess it depends on how deadly it is at that rate. Yeah, yeah. And, right. it's, and it's not. It's not. It is simply a regulation that's put forth and... The water industry has realized that, and this is the, cause the thing that you always want to think about. If we spend millions and millions of dollars treating something that has significant influ insignificant influence on human, uh, public health, how much better could we have served our customers if we had done something else like buy an ambulance or 10 ambulances that have a real measurable value to, to the interest of the uh, community? So talk about just that. How safe is our water to drink? I can't help but think when I you know, go to Costco and see people bring vats of, you know, bottled water out. Have we just become that in society that we're either distrustful, we don't like the taste, we're not, you know, we're not convinced that it really is safe to drink? Well, when you start with the regulatory agencies, which have limits to say this is unacceptable water, even though in, in the perspective of human life, it's not unacceptable, but because there are regulators and they have to come forth with these to keep themselves in business, then you have to deal with it. And so there's a perception. Now, some people don't like the chlorine in water, which is fine. If you don't like it and you prefer to buy bottled water because uh, the taste isn't desirable, that's understandable. Although, you know, one bottle of, of bottled water, you could probably get 50 gallons of water out of your tap for the same cost, but that's okay. People perceive it and they like the convenience. But I would never hesitate to consume water. Actually, it's one of the best things you can do is drink large amounts of water, as we're told all the time. It's Hydrate, the baby. To do. And, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, believe me, it's the least yeah. of your worries when it comes to worry about your health. Jim, what about the Big Springs spill that they had a couple of years ago from the air, uh, the air base? Well, that's, uh, that affected the city of Martinsburg yeah. water supply, and, and they did a remarkable job yeah. responding to that and to uh, um, uh, correcting the problem. And... Um, they just have an ongoing cost now affiliated with removing that uh, from the groundwater yeah. as they treat it and distribute it. So, but they, they, they're in compliance with the regulations, and um, they, yeah. like I say, they've done a tremendous job of making a Does the a county still away. buy some water from Big Springs from the, from the city? We do. We, uh, we, we buy probably uh, 250,000 gallons a day off of that location on, on balance, yeah. so, and it's just part of our arrangement mm -hmm. to work with them to keep that water flowing over there. Jim, we'll add our guest here on the program. So, Jim, there's a question uh, in our comment section. How safe is our water supply from bad actors, terrorists and such, whatever? Well, that is a, a, an issue we're all dealing with in the, in the water systems. We, uh, we have cybersecurity requirements now. That's something relatively new. And um, our uh, SCADA system, which is how we use to control our pumps and plants from uh, remote locations, is is uh, a lot of investment and efforts uh, to make sure that nobody can get in and and make a change from outside so a lot of a lot of time is spent trying to make sure that doesn't happen 
I asked you about the intake of water. What about the discharge of water from a house in all forms? I turn on my faucet, wash my hands, that water goes down the pipe, and, and where does it go from there? Well, that's the sewer side of the equation. Mm -hmm. I always say it's the bad end of the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. We, uh, and, and in the co county, they, they have the same challenges we have where uh, they're making sure they have enough capacity in their system to be able to collect all of that uh, waste from all those new houses and businesses and bring it to facilities to treat it. Uh, and it's very expensive and uh, very involved. And um, we work together with our, our colleagues at the sewer district and a lot of these developments to try to maximize the efficiency of Providing the water, then taking it back, treating it, and then it ends up in the Potomac River. And when people upstream discharge into the Potomac River, every once in a while you hear about E. coli up outbreaks and such. Do you test for E. coli? Is that a regular part of what you have to do? <laughs> well, we constantly test for microbiological uh, components in our finished water. So we're, uh, we are not concerned with that because our treatment process makes sure that it doesn't occur. So it's this... <coughs> this Someday, if you'd like, someday I'll come in and show you all the tests we take on our water supply. But there's um, 80 different bacteri bacteriological samples we take every month throughout our distribution system to make sure the water's safe to consume. So uh, that is the most uh, pressing issue we do because that's the one that has an instantaneous effect on people's health. So it is highly regulated mm -hmm. and highly uh, highly intense as to how much water sampling we do, which is something you don't do on a well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, ah, I'm on a well. I, my water's wonderful. And maybe it is, but you don't know that because you don't test it. Whereas in the public water supply, we're constantly yeah. testing the water for all kinds of parameters to make sure that somebody can take a drink and make sure that it is safe for them. Jim, American Water uh, recently bought a plant in, uh, in Jefferson County. They've been interested in buying uh, the plant in Berkeley County for probably 20-something years. Uh, so they've made several approaches over the years. Uh, what is your position with American Water? Well, they have approached uh, the county commission uh, to discuss that. Uh, our position was, why would people want to pay, pay three times as much for the same service they're presently receiving? And not certain as to what the future would hold as far as their rates go. So I think, uh, I think common sense has surfaced in this particular case. I'm a huge fan of uh, investor owned water companies, used to work for one. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in this case, there was no value in the uh, the economics of it, nor uh, uh, any um, possibility for improving the level of service. So I think they've made their presentation, and I think it's been dismissed. I'm sure that just made a lot of people happy, what you just said. Yeah. All, whenever we talk about American water, the number of complaints in the comments section begins to rise even more so than when we normally do our show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, let me give a real shout out to the county commission on this. They were uh, they were induced with a big payout from American Water and uh, the uh, and I think you'd probably be tempted uh, the amount of money that was been off the county commission. But the county commission took the position we'd be passing all the uh, all the debt, all the uh, increase in fare in, in levies to the uh, uh, to the take uh, users of the water and they opt not to take american water up on their offer i thought it was a very nice and we point. had the gentleman from american water on the show mm -hmm. a couple so mm -hmm. months ago well, and, even, even more recently we had oh really that. okay yeah. and um and he talked about how when you enhance infrastructure in one place just like anything else everybody pays the price so to speak so if they're enhancing something in Kanawha County, then, you know, then the rates can increase in Jefferson County. The cost and, is shared. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, Jim, good to see you. Any, you've had 30 seconds left. Anything else to pass along to our listeners and viewers? Uh, just the simple fact that um, we are, uh, we are uh, very active as we speak and um, love to talk about it if anybody ever has any questions because we're Literally, we're engaged in over $100 million worth of capital improvements as we speak, simply to be able to meet the demands of the community, to try to set the table for the future so that we can support growth if that's what the community desires. Uh, a lot of efforts gone underway. Um, there's a lot of things to be done, and we got a short period of time to do it. Um, we'll, we'll bring you back, and we'll tackle some of those I projects. I hope so, okay. because I'd love to be able to okay. keep people updated as to where we are. Let's so do thank that. you for your time this morning. Yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, 9 o'clock. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10, back with more after the.